Welcome to the Daily Smash for Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. Great day here in Newport Beach. A lot of good stuff happening. A lot of good stuff happening. I feel like since we've moved from the ditch of the port streets, <laughs> things are, my our luck is changing. Things are getting brighter and everything's just, I don't know what it is. I always heard that if you feel like, like, because I felt negative. In that house, I've told you guys that before. Bad energy. Bad energy, but moving to the beach, I don't know if it's. I don't know, but well, it's everything is. I'm just so much happier, and oh, I. I don't know. We went to Curl Gym this morning. It's right down the street. We rode our bikes. Our commute to the gym. If, we're at the beach, so and we come back from the gym. We're on the boardwalk, breathing that salty sea air, looking at the ocean, Catalina Island. It's. It's just. It's a complete. Change of scenery, change of pace. I absolutely love living here. Me? And and yes, great things are happening. Great things. Including some stuff going on at our pickleball house in the desert. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but uh, Did we thank Ilya Wine yet? No, we have not. And we love it so much. Ilya Wine sponsors the Daily Smash. You can get yours delivered to your door 10% off by going to Ilya.com and using the discount code Rick and Kelly 10. Would you recommend Ilya to your friends? Absolutely. You know me. I never lie. We wouldn't promote it if we didn't love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. And we got schooled by one of our smashers. Thank you, smasher. Oh, yeah. For uh, schooling Rick, Rick on how to pronounce it. And by the way, we Googled it. And that's how we got it. Because I can tell you, I was a little perplexed myself because I said, there's Paso Roble up in up north of, it's like by Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. I took you there. I took you yep. to beautiful. It's beautiful. It's wine country. It's where like Sideways was filmed, and some people call it Paso Roble, and some people call it Paso Roble. Yeah. So I looked it up, and I did see the Roble pronunciation. So I was calling it Roble Red, and then I asked Layla Joy Williams, who created the company, how she pronounces it, and she said Roble. So from now on, it's Roble Red. Well, some people call it Prescott, and some people call it Prescott. I'm not kidding. We're interviewing Layla tomorrow morning. Oh, good. And we're going to bring you highlights here on the Smash. She lives interview. in Spain right now. Yeah. From New York. So I she guess knows she... how to pronounce it, and so does my yeah. Smasher. So thank you so much. Yeah, for thanks for, the, uh, for the, uh, the tip. Yes. Uh, very productive morning. Started out with another text from Newsmax asking me if I could be on Newsmax again. Are they going to pay you for doing this? <laughs> I haven't asked yet. but. Huh? And the more times I do it, I feel like the the bigger a part of uh, of the network I'm becoming. Well, the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing is that all my friends, I don't know, are they sitting at home watching Newsmax all day? Because they all call me. It is the craziest thing. Well, Saw Rick know. on Newsmax. Saw Rick on Newsmax. You know, I mean, it used to be. I cannot believe the amount of my friends see you and watch it like i like i don't even have time to sit down and watch tv during yeah that. i don't watch the news all day anymore either i used to mm -hmm. but back in the day everyone put fox on all day long and i think a lot of people now are turning news to newsmax because of tucker leaving and other stuff which is one of the reasons why i talked to them tucker leaving fox and also they brought up that trump is going to be on cnn doing like a town hall on cnn Really? So anyway, I, I thought I'd play this. You haven't even seen this yet. No, I have not. So do you mind, you mind if I play it for I you? I want to play it. I want okay. to see it. Here, here, here it is. How do you read uh, what's going on at Fox? Well, um, I guess they're now trying to heal the wounds caused by Tucker's departure. There's been a lot of uh, moves over the last couple of years. A lot of great people have left. Um, I, I don't know how they hang on to their audience, who in many cases are watching because of Tucker and people like him. It, it's probably a pretty tough time inside the building. I haven't been there in a little bit, but um, I know people who still work there. And I know people who have lost their jobs recently. And it's, um, I would say, a tumultuous time. And I think the person who is the most upset about Tucker's departure is probably Sean Hannity because his ratings have dropped as well because he had such a great lead in from Tucker. And now they've bled more than a million viewers a night at 8 o'clock. Yeah, that's a great point there. Um, and Dennis, your thoughts on this. this there it is looks like... Maybe this is really a good idea from uh, Donald Trump to to go on. He's we were saying this a little while ago. He, he needs more than just MAGA voters to get him elected to be Joe Biden. And it seems like a brilliant move on CNN's part to try and capitalize on the the 
issues at Fox and mm-hmm. grab the viewers who are upset with Fox mm-hmm. and, and pull them over to CNN. I mean, it could be that both of these networks are now moving towards the middle, towards each other. Uh, I don't know, but uh, it's pretty uh, Trump is so entertaining. And, you know, I might even watch CNN just to see that. <laughs> you know, can, guys, can I just say that I, I was yeah. always a fan of, of Rick Leventhal's stuff when he was Absolutely. at Fox. Oh, okay. me too. His stuff was incredibly well reported. He was one of the solid guys. He wasn't yeah. just a reader. OK, so, Rick, no. yeah, as a fellow Fox alum, can I just ask you real quick? Do you yeah. think there's some kind of taint in the media to where it's harder to get hired if you've been at Fox? I don't know. I mean, I'm not really looking for work right now, but um, <laughs> I, I think that I think that perhaps, you know, the other networks probably do have a hey, don't touch him. He was at Fox kind of a policy in place. I'm not Newsmax, I hope. But, you know, others most likely. Yeah, I think it's um, hit or miss but, from my own uh, experience. Yeah. It, it depends on what you did. Like Rick was a fabulous reporter. Uh, not somebody who had a, a an evening show, which tended to be more opinionated. Right. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. if you're looking for opinion. a good reporter, Rick, you Rick know, Rick would fit yeah. the bill in a second. Well, here's the thing, Bob. I got I've been rained on enough. You know, I, I don't want to chase hurricanes anymore. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah, you've been, been, been enough. Been been enough. I'm I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. He can say that. But if they come to him, he will. You know, you're, you're, we you're, all you're have a price. Right. and told, you know, <laughs> dying to be on TV. All of us. I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dennis Neal. I just want to one other ahead, thing. You know, I know a lot of shows are now uh, in reruns or postponed because of that writer's strike. Uh, the Rick and Kelly show on Patreon and our daily uh, our daily smash on YouTube is not canceled, not postponed. You can still see me and my wife, Kelly, uh, on YouTube every single day. Uh, <laughs> hey, a very, a, very a, a, a beautiful couple, I might add. Your, your wife is gorgeous and has <laughs> great, you. great personal style, too, as do you. All right, Dennis Neal, Rick Leventhal. Thanks. So She's a big fan of yours. Oh, that's so sweet. You know who was a big fan of me, too? It was Sean Hannity. He used to watch me. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? He, he, was, he stopped me one day. He was like, Rick, is Kelly like that in person? Like, is she really like that? <laughs> I had no idea. The guy watched Real Housewives of Orange County like all the time. He's a big fan of yours. I know. Well, that was a good. That was really, really good. I thought it was good, too. I thought it was really good. I just, you know, I watch these people and you're just so much more handsome and just so well-spoken. You know, I Thank think you. you deserve to be on on there. You're well, just so talented. You I, know? Did sh- I did. Sh- Thank you. I did shave this morning. Y- you look great. You look younger. You don't look Do so. I look yes, younger? you look you look clean cut. I like it. <laughs> I was like, I, it's maybe. nice. It's nice to kiss you oh. and not feel all, you know, like smooth. <laughs> you don't want to get your lipstick on me. I don't. I understand. Um, I handled a bunch of other stuff today, including an order for pickleball paddles to Canada because we can't just USPS to Canada. It's only in the U.S. So working that out. I got it in a box. That was up. so nice. Thank you. They're paying a premium because they're fans of yours. Oh. And it's a surprise. I don't want to say any more because I don't want to give away the surprise, but it's a surprise for somebody. Thank you. Um, so- and then I got a call from uh, Davin with the Angels. Next week, I'm going to the stadium and I'm going to train as a backup PA announcer. <laughs> I, I I mean, this was his. This was his bucket list. So when he. Uh, we were with Doug Budin and Jeff Lewis and everybody at Barnes and Nobles when he was promoting his book. And Doug Budin asked uh, Rick, he says, what is on your bucket list? And Rick said to be an announcer for baseball. Yeah. And <laughs> I was like, he got a call and I, I like they said to go shadow and all this. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you know what? You know, when you hit like in your 60s, you probably think, oh, you know, you don't have like much left or whatever, or you're, (laughs) you know, I got plenty of gas in the tank, baby. Yeah, I know. But, you know, you get to a certain age where you're like, okay, you're just tired of working so hard. You're working your whole life, you know, but if you still can have dreams and still conquer them. Well, and so it's just so like enlightening and enriching just to see that. And it just makes you, see that you know what age is just a number and if you want to go do something you still can do go do it it's amazing it, it would Rick. not have happened without you because you know the owner and the president of the team and we ran into the president at a golf course a few months ago and it, the subject came up 
And he said, uh, let me put you in touch with our marketing guy or whoever, the, you know, the guy in charge of that department. And it's happening. So I'm going to go to the stadium at 10 o'clock in the morning, and they have a press credential waiting for me. They walk me up to the, the booth, which is like right above the, the whatever, the Diamond Club or whatever. And I'm going to sit there with a the guy who's been in the Angels announcer for 10 years, and he does the Galaxy games, too. He's been doing those for 30 years, apparently. One of the oh, other. I know the president of the Galaxy, too. Yeah, I know you do. Chris Klein. So one of the Angela other. Angela is my girlfriend. Been, he's been with the team a very long time, and he's the man. But what if he gets sick? Or what if something happens and he can't get to the stadium? There's a car crash. Or what, who knows? What anything? It, you know, what if I trip him? I push him in front of a bus. What? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, the point is that if he can't make it to a game, then they would call me. Yeah. And I would go there and now batting, number 22. I don't know all the team names yet. But, <laughs> but I, I, that's, that's the thing. That's, Mike Trout. Does Mike Trapp still play for the Angels? No, but they have Otani. They have... I, I'm going to have to do my homework before the game. Okay. But... <laughs> I, I have something. You do? You're going to die. Oh. So, um, I... Well, for me... Oh, shoot. We have somebody at the house, at the Oops. door. Stand by. Stand by. Come in! Oh, we have... Um, we're, I may, I'm making taco night tonight. And my friend Coral and Frank are coming by to watch the Laker and the Clippers game. So that's what we are doing right now. Come up here, everybody. Come up here. Yeah, come up here. Um, this is great. People love this. This is why we do this at home. So people can come in. Ooh, what did you bring? Look at, look at this. Hey, come in. Wait, come over here. Just say hi to my... To my, my smashers. Ooh, what did you bring? Oh, watermelon. Ooh, Hi. nice. Oh. This is my friend Coral. Hi. Look at how pretty Hello. she is. Hello. <laughs> and this is my friend Frank. You come wow, come you look good. Us? Those you earrings. Yeah. That's, uh, come closer. Oh, come closer. Oh, hi. Frank, get in here. So Coral was my first friend when I moved here to, um, from Newport Beach in 2010. Yes. 2010. Yes. She was my first girlfriend. When we were younger. When we and, were way younger. And Frank and I... <laughs> Oh, this is nice. You know what? No stories. Okay. I don't want to hear any stories about your single, wild and single days. Frank and I are gonna have gonna bet on the Lakers Golden State Warriors game. Who tonight. do you think's gonna win? Lakers, of course. Lakers. Warriors. Lakers. Let's go, Lakers. You're rooting for the Lakers? Yes. Why? Because now I, I I like the Lakers. All right. Well, well I never liked the Lakers when they play the Phoenix Suns because I used to call them the Fakers. Oh, but, but now, yeah, I don't I mean Golden State. I mean, you don't, I don't like know. the Warriors? They're so awesome. No. Steph Curry is so They're good. Nice yeah. You guys want to sit down? Going to get a drink? Are we going to sit over here? Yeah. Out of your way. Wherever you but, want. Wherever you want. People can um, look at you. you. Oh, thank you. No. So, I kill everything. Wait, I want to read a couple comments. Already, already fixed the place up. Okay. Yeah. Go yeah. see Julie's room. Go look at Julie's room. It's so cute. Yeah. Uh, Phoebe Lee said, oh, God, I'm so glad you didn't touch on the Met Gala. I'd rather hear about Biden, and I don't want to hear about him either. And then Richard Florida Man said, I just love how beautiful the two of you are together. Oh, nice. That's so nice. Before I get to the reel of the day, which is amazing, Kelly found, I do want to remind you, we sold a lot of pickleball paddles and balls today. Oh, we have some updates on that, too. We do. You can get yours at pickleballpartytown.store we sell these paddles and balls they're custom graphite paddles they're awesome and the balls play great they're quiet the, the woman came by today with, with uh what's her name whitney yes her aunt and they picked up six paddles and a bunch of balls and she was saying how much she loved playing with our, like her husband had bought a bunch of different paddles and she said i absolutely loved your paddle and oh I went, my god whitney i gave her whitney one uh -huh. and so she just loves the paddle and said she loved the way it sounded and all that so um i encourage you to get yours they're awesome and also i just i got another shipment of books i'm about to sign a couple and send them out mm -hmm. so uh, you can get yours on amazon or barnesandnoble.com but Chasing I have, catastrophe. I had to tell you what happened to me today. Okay, so and then we'll I, get to the pickleball story. Okay, I have um, I had this like thing on my bottom of my foot, like yeah. right there, like right there, and it was hurting me. It was hurting to like walk on it. Yeah. And it felt like a bump, kind of. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to go see my friend, Doctor Moy, who's a podiatrist, because this is like there's something in there. I felt like there was something like in there, and that was like growing over it. Yeah. 
I went to um, Julie at Del Mar Nails and Corona Del Mar to get my nails done. <laughs> and guess what? Uh, she told me it was. What? It's a corn. A corn. And she tried to pick it out. And? I'm like a corn. I was thinking about my grandma when she used to have corns on the side of her. Yeah. There's well, like, you can get some like. You could be a grandma. Have you ever had a corn? <laughs> corn? Yeah. Fridge? Of course she's. No, had not a in the fridge. The corn on your foot. <laughs> <laughs> on the cob. <laughs> so did she fix it? Did she fix it? I have a corn on the bottom of my foot. <laughs> did she fix it? It feels better. Yes. Oh my god. She picked it out like surgery over That's there. That's amazing. So I. I I'm going to save the, the bulk of the pickleball story for next week. But we've been struggling to get this permit approved for a long time because we built the court without a permit, not knowing we needed one. Because they told us we didn't need one. They just said we need a permit for lights. <laughs> the company that sold us the court told us we didn't need a permit. I asked specifically, do we need one? They said no. But it turns out we did. So retroactively, we're trying to get one. The hearing's next week. And we're dying. So you guys were probably going to. You guys have to keep, like, we did something so smart, and I think it's going to make us a ton of money. Oh, yeah. So we have, uh, you know you know how they say bad things can turn into good things? Yes. I think this is something good, that something bad that is going to turn into good. Hopefully. Great. It's going to turn into great. How great? Great. Really, Andy? Great. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, Great. Andy. I'm glad you got your approval, Andy Cohen. <laughs> Honey, I'm all telling right. you, it, this is all good. Wait, I want you guys to see this real quick. Mm. This is the reel of the day. So Kelly showed me this. I, I didn't believe it. I watched it, it like 10 times. Uh-huh. So, this is uh, a little girl who helped raise this donkey from a baby. A burro. How do you say burro? And she hadn't burro. seen the donkey in a very long time, and the donkey hadn't seen her until this happened. Get a burro. I know. I'm, honestly, that is one of the most moving. Is that not yes. one of the most moving things yeah, you've seen? So I want one of those for a pet. <laughs> Dude, that's a big pet. Yes. That's going to take up a lot of room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do have a rooftop deck. Yes. We could do that. We got this. We got this rented this little golf cart in El Dorado in Cabo. And the little golf cart's name was Mi Burro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh-huh. In the news now. In the news. You may have heard me briefly mention the writer's strike. There was a major writer's strike underway, which means that Saturday Night Live is going to be dark this Saturday well, night. Well, good, because the writers on that thing suck because they have to be woke and they can't say anything funny. I hate that show. I hate Pete, that show. Pete Davidson was going to host. I didn't used to hate it. I, there was, I thought it was hilarious back in the day. Yeah, they can't do it now. They can't do Pat anymore because you got to offend somebody. Well, well, they had to cancel Saturday Night Live because of the writer's strike. They also... Quiet on the set, please. Uh, they also are canceling... Um, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Late Night with uh, Seth, Ma- all of the late night shows. I don't watch Jimmy Kimmel anymore. He's too woke for me. Um, what's his name? Uh, who's the other guy? NBC. I don't know. I don't watch. You know who I can't believe he used to think it was woke? Was that one um, guy with the glasses? David it, Letterman? No, the other Conan one. Conan O'Brien? No. Uh, anyway, he used to be, I thought he was a big, huge... Um, woke guy and uh-huh. now he's not he had actually he made sense oh during... bill bill maher yeah him so he won't be on either i i, I thought he was I, i've turned to like that guy he Net- has like common sense and he's a critical thinker and... all the production is going to shut down for all of the sitcoms all of the tv shows all of the late nights any live show so reality tv wasn't part born by one of the previous writer strikes the last one lasted 100 days cost hollywood two billion dollars this could go on that long or longer. And if it does, that means they're not making any TV shows or movies or any of that stuff. Well, that's when you go in and you get somebody that the starving young kids that want to be writers and you have them 
take them their place and I mean give them a chance. Cross the picket line. Yeah, cross the picket line. That's what I would do. Well, I just have to say I, should- I and I would have them not on a huh. Yeah, scabs. I respect writers a lot. I consider myself a writer. You wrote a book. I did. <laughs> and uh, It's a shame. Some of their demands seem a little outrageous to me. Like, we want X number of writers on set, even if you don't need them. Like, well, why would they do that? Why would you ask for something they obviously he, they're not going to give you? They, they're artists. They don't understand business, see? And that's the problem there. Yeah. Well, good luck to both sides. I want to see productions resume. I don't want all these people out of work. Um, well, think, they're making themselves out of work. Well, but writers are underpaid and, and they're getting paid less. So are teachers <laughs> and we need to get their pay up. I mean, those okay. are our future. And look, they're getting paid nothing. And look at our kids. They're like falling behind. They're like, it's, it's. it's yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. You're always going to get both sides of the story here on The Daily Smash. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed yet on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button right now. And please right push now. that like button. That yeah, like button. Like. Hit it, please, please just do that for us if you're watching. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're on it. our way to 40K. Yeah. We want to get there sooner rather than later, so we need your help. Subscribe, please. And we hope you'll have a smash day. Yeah. Bye, Smashers. Mwah. Kisses. See you guys. Bye.